Young Concert Artists is a very courageous organization. Their standards are based on the idea that an artist has that extra spark of something that will communicate, that will be slightly provocative, slightly dangerous. They'll pick someone who is going to be original enough, out there enough, to actually redefine to some degree what music making would be about. There's no place for these kids to go at a certain time. They can't do it alone. Talent is not enough. You have to have some backing. You have to have somebody to show you who to see and where to go. Just teaching them how to get on in the music world. That in itself is tremendously important and very few kids get it. There is no other real mechanism for exposure. You can go to the Tchaikovsky competition, the Van Cliburn competition, but remember those competitions offer you some money, they offer you some concerts, they offer you maybe a recording. They offer a few things that are wonderful, but they don't offer you support in a career. Support in a career is much more important than a handful of concerts or some money. What would you like to start with? Bach. Okay, good. Within this welter of competitions, there was this organization called Young Concert Artists, which stood apart. They were different. It was much more low-key and at the same time far more important because they existed to find exceptionally gifted young musicians and give them a hand up in this very difficult to navigate music business. In looking back, the most important thing Young Concert Artists gave me was growing up time. That niche that you have to fill between student and performer with a name that can be booked is huge. It is a catch-22. You can't get work unless you have a name. You don't have a name unless you've been working. There is a very fine line between a student and a professional, and it's a hard line to cross. As fine as it is, it's, it's like a cavern for most people. They allow you to perform in front of many different kinds of audiences without worrying about whether these concerts are important or unimportant, but just the experience of playing for people. Which room has a piano in it, you know? Stage! I don't know. No, no, there was a backstage, the soloist room. Yes. I think that's over yeah, there. Yeah, that one is. It's not that doing a concert in Montana is less important than doing a concert in Berlin, but chances are you'll be more nervous for the concert in Berlin, just because of tradition and the fact that Alfred Brendel played there the night before. Sometimes you do well, sometimes you do less well, sometimes you do abysmally. You have a better shot at doing well <laughs> with experience. YCA is the way for a young musician to become a professional musician. You learn about how to put together a recital program. You learn about how to deal with the presenter. When you're in classical music, there are a lot of rules, but they're not written down anywhere. But you have to learn them to survive. Well, when I was in music school, I met some extraordinary artists. And I wondered why I wasn't able to hear them play concerts. And they said that they had no way of getting to play concerts. I got the idea of just starting a series in Greenwich Village in a loft. Have people come there to hear a concert and find that they're hearing actually a great artist who's just starting their career. People like Richard Good or Paula Robeson, or Ruth Laredo. People just love the whole idea of the series, but then I realized presenting any of these artists in one concert, really, that was nice, but it really didn't do very much for them. So I started to find other performing opportunities for them and try to book them in concerts. And that's how it started. Young Concert Artists is an organization that helps us people who hire, present artists, and making our decision. We have more and more pressure to fill more and more seats. I have so many people to choose from, people that the public knows, people that have a following. 
when you deal with a young artist, you, you take a risk. It's very hard to do. You have to only do it with someone who has a mechanism behind them. In other words, if I hear a great violinist, and they don't have the support of a YCA, very hard. Because you, you want to help someone who has the possibility of a career. What's special about YCA is that the people who are attracted to it and people who support it are music lovers of the deepest kind who can, in their hearts and in their minds, understand why it's important to start with a person you've never heard of and support a career that may take years to grow, but won't grow unless you plant the seeds today. Mayuko Camillo, you remember our 14-year-old genius, is opening the Boston Pop season this year, May 6th and 7th, with <coughs> Keith Lockhart conducting. What really impresses me is Susan's staff and her board. She has managed to gather around her such an enormous number of people who are interested in this organization. There's some idealistic chord that's struck when board members associate with young concert artists. They participate. They give their homes for auditions. They give their homes for the kids to stay. They're always involved. These are not frivolous activities. These are things that are important and help to build community. I was flabbergasted to be chosen. It was my first time ever in New York City, and I, f I was staying with a board member in, you know, Park Avenue, and I was, you can imagine, it was just, the whole experience was unbelievable. I was so surprised that I won. I turned to Susan and I asked, well, what exactly is this that I want? I mean, do I get like $500 or something? I had no idea. So she started laughing, and she said, no, you don't understand. You have management for three years, with career building, with your debut in New York at the 92nd Street Y and in Washington, D.C. at the Terrace Theater. And so I thought, oh, wow, I'm actually starting a real career. That's incredible. I certainly would not have had the background and the, and the on-the-job training <laughs> that I think was, was I think there essential. is, uh, YCA is absolutely the most important thing that I can think of actually in my life because I, I, I was a, a good student at Juilliard but a platter of concerts wasn't given to me. I needed something between then and major management. This was just the most vulnerable time for a lot of us. Pull up, pull up, up. <gasps> Pick up here. <laughs> not your shoulders, not your shoulders, just here. She was very focused on appearance and stage manner, and I'm one of her great failures. I am a major disaster in the annals of YCA. As you can see, my Land's End special, uh, well, she tried. Oh, Nurturing a young artist is very much what young concert artists is all about, and it's very unusual. Most young artists are kind of thrown out into the world and booked as much as possible and never discover until they're wildly overcommitted and on the verge of burnout that they're doing too much. And uh, so many of us have lived through this. God knows I did. That's why it's so important to have counselors who are saying, maybe you should slow this down a little bit. If I feel comfortable and so happy in my life, it's because everything came, you know, I was not suddenly a star in, 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 in one month. And I think it's so important to build a solid career to have this kind of step-by-step -step process. Susan Wadsworth was my mother, so to speak. She was the support center behind me. And it was a huge thing, both personally and musically, to have that feeling. YCA allows you to go out into the world and learn your trade. A string quartet is an entity that requires incredible dedication for a number of years before you're really sounding good enough that you can actually make a living. And without the concerts which YCA provided for three or four years, certainly we wouldn't have financially been able to make a go of it. YCA actually stands for you don't have to play Les Mis. I think, no, the letters don't quite work. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. Help when you need it most. 
life after YCA is often sort of a rude awakening to the reality of the, the music world, which is a, a very harsh and difficult lifestyle. We're very happy when our managers get us concerts. Uh, Susan got us concerts, she helped us with our dresses and hair, and she helped us to present ourselves as speakers. Yes, in the stripes. How hard was it when you first started? I took it very gradually, one step at a time, and so it wasn't difficult. For us to have audiences in the future, people who really will enjoy what you're doing and have some feeling that they know something about it, if you go to them in the schools when they're young and you move them with your playing, it's the best way to break down that idea of classical music. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's so nice for young people to hear other young people do this. To relate to people their own age, see that they're real human beings, and they're communicating with them. Murray Pariah. I'm sure a lot of people would have loved to say, I heard Murray Pariah's debut for YCA. I'm sure a lot of people would love to say, I heard Richard Goode's first YCA recital. I heard Pinka Zuckerman's debut in New York. YCA has been wonderful to us, and we've been lucky to go on and make some kind of impact in the music world. Hey, no, it's so great to see you. Great to see you too. If it hadn't been for YCA looking specifically for unknown gifted young musicians, I would have had absolutely no avenue for becoming known. There's a list of very well-known musicians who have gone through the portals of YCA. It goes on and on. Certainly, the musical landscape of America would be very different and I think adversely affected by the lack of these unusual thinking musicians who were nurtured by YCA. I've always felt that the government should subsidize at least some of the art, which is true in other countries. But it's the private sector, really, that has to come through. And I think if it weren't for the private sector, I think oh, it would just not live. My involvement in philanthropy has been to a very great extent with art and the sciences, which I still think are the two places where you can be truthful. That's why I think it's so important to help young artists, because it would be a terrible life without the arts. Mm -hmm.